So you've just brought yourself a red Komodo. The good news, you officially own a red cinema camera. The bad news, that camera costs you a lot of money and you still need to spend more money to rig it out if you want to use it. You might know from my previous videos, it's a camera rig! I'm passionate about finding affordable, ingenuitive ways to rig your camera. So in this episode, I'm gonna show you the cheapest way to rig out your red Komodo. Hello everybody, my name is Guy Pigden. I am the Savage Filmmaker. I make feature films, web series and shorts, and I'm here to give tips and advice to indie filmmakers about how to make those things. Today, we're gonna to look at some of the cheapest options to get you set up with your Komodo and ready to film. But along with those cheap rigging options, I'm also gonna show you some slightly more expensive rigs that provide extra features and flexibility should you want to scale up from the cheapest option when you can afford to. All the parts I discussed will be linked in the description. So we start off with CF cards. We can't have the Komodo running without these. I use the Angel Bird Pro CF cards. These are red approved and are reasonably priced for expensive CF cards. I recommend getting at least two and that they are the 512 gig or more. Even when recording Red Raw at the lower settings, you'll find that 16-bit files will eat up your card super quick. They are $529 for a 512 gigabyte version, but if you want to save money, grab a 256 gig version for $299. Something to be careful of is that Angel Bird have different, cheaper versions of their CFast cards designed for other cameras, but these will not work well or at all with your Red Komodo. Trust me, this is one area you can't take a shortcut on, so use those CF Pro versions. Now we're going to need a battery solution. You can buy the Canon BP975 batteries for around $150 to $200 each, depending on what brand you try but your results may vary. And yes, you'll need at least two, which comes to $400. The good part is they're hot swappable and they're compact. The bad part is, you know, they're pretty expensive. Personally, I have a host of V-mount batteries and prefer to use these as they can also power extra things like a monitor or remote follow focus. You can get a red approved Core SWX Canon Micro 98 watt V-mount battery for $275, or use your old ones. This is still gonna be cheaper than buying two BP batteries. The only catch is you'll need a way to connect your Komodo to that V-mount battery. You have two options here. You can buy a V-mount adapter that plugs into the battery slots on the back of your Komodo. I like this option because it keeps everything nice and compact. I use the Core SWX battery plate for the Red Komodo at $200. It's slightly more expensive than the similar battery plate from Tilta, but it's red approved. It shows your battery status when combined with red approved batteries, and it sits the V-mount battery vertically as opposed to horizontally, unlike the Tilta one. It also features a DTAP port, USB type A, and two pin Limo outputs. This keeps the battery snugly tucked up against the camera body. But if you really wanna save money, you can also just do what I did to begin with and buy a DTAP to two pin Limo cable, such as the Core SWX one, which I used, or a cheaper one from somewhere like Cambate or Condor Blue. Then mount your battery to an affordable cheese plate instead. This is gonna save you a substantial amount of money, but it does mean you'll need to set up your camera on rails, which will add to its overall size. More on that later. The ultimate key to keeping your rig small and affordable is this incredibly handy Nicey Rig NATO rail with a rosette mount adapter. This acts as the connector to everything else, and the great news is it's only $22. We place this NATO rail on top of the Komodo, and we're gonna use this to connect our monitor and side handle. Note, you can also purchase one that has a rosette mount on both sides if you wanna use two handles. Speaking of handles, you could buy the red outrigger handle, which has a handy record button, but it's $475. Do you really need to press record with your thumb that much? A much more affordable side handle without a record button is the small rig with the RE rosette mount. This is only $98. 
You could also try the Nicey rig, which is only $73 and imitates the look of the much more expensive Global Dynamics Stubby Cowboy for $275. Obviously, you'll notice a difference in quality, but you'll also save $200. Personally, I like the small rig side handle best. Now you need to attach your monitor. We're gonna use the small rig swivel and tilt monitor mount with a NATO clamp for $60. And finally, we need a monitor, but actually this is where you can save a huge amount of money if you already have an iPhone or even an iPad or similar smartphone. You simply download the Red Komodo control app onto your phone or tablet and then connect wirelessly to the Komodo. This will give you a touchscreen monitor and controls for your Red Komodo. Make all the image adjustments by tapping the screen and hit record. No expensive monitor necessary, just a cheap phone holder such as the Joby Griptite one for $19 that can screw onto your monitor mount and hey presto, you're ready. Now add a lens. Again, if we want to talk value for money, I would recommend the Sigma Art 18 to 35 millimeter as one of the most versatile lenses that offers the most bang for the buck. And there you have it, the most affordable setup for the Red Komodo coming in at $1,673. If you already have an EF or RF lens, it's just under $1,000. And if you already have a V-mount battery, it'll be closer to $700. But here's the thing, while this setup will absolutely get you out there and filming, it's far from perfect and there's definitely a few limitations to going with this budget setup. So let's try adding a few extra bits and pieces to make this Komodo the cinematic beast that's ready for anything. First, while using your phone as a monitor is a good temporary solution, it's probably not going to work well in the long run. The main reason being that there's always going to be an issue of lag with the wireless communication and you can't accurately focus when you need to do that really quickly. So the first thing I did was upgrade my monitor. It's hard to find an affordable monitor for the Komodo. Small HD kind of have the market cornered in this regard, but all of their monitors are just so expensive. I originally went with the Small HD Focus Pro with the touch control, which has subsequently been discontinued but I was pretty underwhelmed with this monitor. The five inch screen makes it difficult to really accurately judge your image. The resolution is 1280 by 720, and probably worst of all, it was only 800 nits, which meant in sunlight, you could barely make out your image. It was also missing an SDI out, which made it very difficult to use on bigger productions when wanting to create a separate feed out to another monitor. It did have red camera touch control, if you paid extra, but I found you don't need a touch screen, that's more of a luxury rather than a necessity. So I solved all of those problems by buying the Port Keys HS7T2 for a very reasonable $400. It's a seven inch monitor, which is going to really help get your in-camera settings right. It supports SDI and HDMI pass-through, so you can use it to send a feed to a director's monitor or focus puller. And it's 1200 nits of brightness, which means looking at the screen in daylight is no problem. Now this monitor is not a touch monitor, it does not have Komodo control, and if you're looking for that, you need to get the Port Keys BM5 instead. But the menu here is very easy and intuitive to use with the buttons on top. It also comes with a power to DTAP cable so you can run this monitor directly using your V-mount battery and it also has a mounting bracket for a wireless transmitter. The image is 1920 by 1200 uh, which is okay but it only has 8-bit color and it's not premium by any means. And perhaps the worst aspect is the reflective nature of the screen. Overall, this offers incredible value for money as it's about $1,000 cheaper than anything in the small HD range. But there's also this curious thing at the bottom of it, how you screw it onto your monitor mount. There's these two holes rather than having one hole in the middle. This always seems a little bit strange to me because it doesn't really fit that well on most monitor mounts that are designed to have that screw in the middle. Sadly, the Komodo does not have internal NDs, so if you really want to be able to control how much light you're letting into the sensor, you're going to need ND filters. This is an absolute necessity, and this is where swapping out filters can become a huge pain in the ass. Thankfully, Tilter have recently released the Mirage matte box with a variable ND filter and the ability to purchase an extension, which even allows you to stack filters. 
um, Vaxxis have created a whole set of affordable filters to use with this system. I have the Pure Mist filter, which is a similar to a Black Pro Mist filter, and I also have the Streak filter, which kind of gives you these anamorphic flares. Here's some examples with them at work. This for me is the most practical and affordable way to use filters with the Komodo. The Mirage with the variable ND is only $369 and its extension drop and tray is $59. New filters are around $70 a piece. The matte box is very light and compact and you can use it with or without rails. It comes with a really solid carry case and step up rings to attach it to your lenses. I traditionally hate using matte boxes, but the Mirage makes everything easy and I highly recommend this solution. Yes, like all variable NDs, you will get some color cast when using it, but certainly not enough to bother me. The only negative to this matte box is that it can only take lenses with a 95mm front diameter and below so it won't work with larger cinema lenses. Now we've got a proper monitor, matte box and ND filters, it's time to start thinking about a cage for this thing. While the Red Komodo itself has a solid metal construction, if you want to protect your camera or you just want to start attaching more things, you're going to need a camera cage. There are two that sit in the affordable category, the trusty small rig cage which is very easy to slot your Komodo into and takes barely a minute to set up. It has quarter 20, 3 8 16 threads and the Ari style mounts and I can attach my NATO rail in exactly the same way to the top of it. But it does block the connection ports at the top of the Komodo, although you can remove the top piece. What I don't like about this particular cage is that it doesn't offer a lens support connection bracket. My personal pick for a cage for the Komodo is the Aitzen cage. It does have threads to add a lens support bracket. It's a little more compact than the small rig version and fits the Komodo in a more understated way. And it costs only $109 for the base configuration. It's a little more complicated to attach than the small rig version, but once it's on, you'll never have to take it off. I also brought that lens support mount bracket for the Canon Speed Booster, which avoids play between the lens adapter and the Komodo itself. Now both of these cages also offer upgraded versions where you can add base plates with rails and top handles, but the cost of the cages becomes significantly more expensive. So I decided to keep it affordable and I've gone with one of the cheaper small rig base plate and rails. This allows you to attach things like a follow focus to the setup. This particular small rig base plate is $24 and the rails are $15. You may find your camera is too close to your rails for some attachments, so just take that into consideration when trying to save money. Now we have what I consider to be the Komodo secret weapon in making it a truly great cinema camera. And that's ironically Canon's RF to EF speed booster originally designed for the Canon C70. This is not cheap at $600, but it really unlocks the full potential of this camera, in my opinion. The Speed Booster takes the Red Komodo from a 1.33x crop factor to a 0.95 crop factor, making the image size equal to, or in fact slightly larger than a full frame sensor. That's right, I love the full frame look, I've talked about it many times. And while this is not exactly the same, it's close enough and it gives you an extra stop of light, which for a camera which is not amazing in low light can be a huge lifesaver. It also essentially doubles the focal lengths of your lens set. A 35mm lens with the regular EF adapter is actually the equivalent of a 46mm lens when accounting for the Komodo's crop factor. That same lens becomes a 33mm lens when you have on the speed booster allowing you to have essentially two different focal lengths for each lens you own, which in a way doubles your lens set. I love using the Speed Booster and it's a permanent part of my rig. It's also very helpful when you want to use slow motion on the Komodo, but want to retain a better field of view when punched into 4K or 2K to get those higher frame rates. However, a word of warning, 
This will not work with super 35 millimeter lenses. You will see huge vignetting around your image. That means a lens like the Sigma 18 to 35 will only be usable at 35 millimeters. Its wider focal lengths will introduce this vignette around the image. So to truly make the most of the speed booster, you will need full frame lenses to accompany it. Still, I consider this to be my favorite accessory for the Komodo that I brought to date. Finally, to finish off our rig setup, you may decide you'd like a top handle to attach your monitor, audio solutions, or just for another point of contact when you're out filming run and gun. If that's the case, you'll need a NATO top handle. I'm currently using the Nicey Rig quick release handle, which costs only $32. I like this top handle because it has a hole to add a 15mm rod and plenty of places to attach a monitor as well. For run and gun I actually attach another small rig monitor mount to the front of the top handle and place my monitor here. If you want to go a little more upmarket I recommend the Neatsy Stinger top handle as something that provides a lot of mounting options and is a very comfortable fit in the hand for $85. So that wraps up our full Komodo rig build. I hope you found it helpful in giving you some ideas on how to configure this camera affordably. And you can check out this video if you want to have a look at some lens tests I ran on the Red Komodo to help you decide which lens to buy. Do you have a favorite Red Komodo accessory that is a must have as part of your setup? I'd love to hear about it in the comment section. As always, I am the Savage Filmmaker and I'll see you when I see you.